Lamb. Hey kids, welcome back to the Hey Lamb podcast. It's me again, Matt, aka Treacle. Welcome back to the Hey Lamb podcast. We are going to talk about Mariah. Same thing we do every Friday. This comes out if you listen Saturday, Sunday, whenever you like to listen or watch, then it's your regular slice of Mariah geek out time. And don't forget, you can get involved over on Instagram. Okay, so I am Treacle Tots on Twitter and Instagram, but the podcast is also on Instagram. It is Hey Lamp Podcast. So get involved over there. And also, you can support the podcast by, well, two ways really. You can become a member of my YouTube channel, which has got over 200 Mariah Carey videos. So check out the link in the description to go over to my YouTube channel and drop some comments, hit some thumbs up on some videos. And if you really want to show some love, you can become a member of my YouTube channel. You get bonus content, including the after show to the podcast each and every week. And also you can head over to buymeacoffee.com slash heylam and treat me to a little splash. Thank you to everybody who has buy, uh, been buying me a few little splashes over there at buymeacoffee.com slash heylam. I'll be honest with you, I don't drink coffee and I'm fake English. I don't drink tea. I don't drink tea or coffee, any hot drink. So there, there is no buymeavodka.com, at least that, that I'm not aware of. So um, every every few like coffees, then I'll put it forward, you know, to like another little liter bottle of vodka. So I appreciate that because I'm sat here with a splash. So it all it all counts towards the the production of the podcast. So thank you to everyone who's buying me splashes on buying me a coffee. Really do appreciate that. So that's all the housekeeping, guys. It is that era of Glitter's 20th anniversary, and I just need to talk to you guys about it. I'm I'm sliding into so many DMs, and you guys are sliding into mine, and it's just that time of year, and we've had some acknowledgement, but maybe not quite as much as I would have liked. Maybe some of you would have liked to have some more as well for Mariah, but you know that I'm going to talk about Glitter here more than just once here on the podcast. So... I'm thinking maybe like a few different episodes, but first of all, we're going to talk about the music, all right? We have to talk about the soundtrack, the songs, we have to get into it all. And joining me for the conversation today around the podcast is returning guest, fan favourite, podcast favourite, friend of the pod, deep friend of the pod, Taz, you're back again, darling. Welcome. Listen, as I've always said, I'm more than happy to talk to Mariah. My real friends won't listen to me, so this is a great opportunity. <laughs> Well, welcome back. Always a pleasure to have you. How have you been? It's been a minute since we caught up. Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, just enjoying the summer, working away, you know, just getting through this whole coronavirus thing. So you say enjoying the summer, but as I sit to you, as I, as I sit here now and talk to you, it is a wet, miserable one here on the south coast of England. It doesn't feel like summer at all. What's it like for you over in Ireland? It's mixed here. Like it could be raining today. It could be. 25 degrees tomorrow sunshine so we just take it as it comes but it's constantly clammy whether it's raining or sunny it's clammy all the time so i'm not clammy. For that, but we're... <laughs> there's a word i've not heard for a minute clammy <laughs> i know yeah. you mean that like it's it's wet it's warm there was it, i woke up to like stormy weather today and then right now uh the sun's trying to come through but all the windows are shut i if i open up anything i can't even think about stepping out my balcony forget sunbathing my tan has faded it feels like we had like a little pretend summer and I was like oh that's the warm-up I'm getting my tan on it's like nope that was it <laughs> that was it that was the summer apparently oh but um your work's been pretty consistent you just worked like all the way through there's no been like big dramatic you know snap back to reality right no I've been like I have always worked in the office but like since last March of last year you know I've been working from home con constantly so I'll they thought about bringing us back into the office um, in the next month or two, so we'll see how that goes. So yeah, oh but I have gosh. been enjoying working from home. You know, I just the commuting and everything. I just repel, yeah. like just dealing with all of that. The commute is from the bedroom to the living room or something. I we, we okay. We we acknowledged this before we actually started uh, recording. <laughs> I'm gonna giggle every time you built you you hold up that great big freaking pint glass like. <laughs> You are a proper geezer gay. You're there with a pint glass and I'm here with my little dainty usual vodka. Because as I said to you off camera, a gentleman always drinks like a lady. So it's it's splashes, Hello? it's spirits, it's cocktails. Okay, so this is a cider and I didn't have oh. any splash. I didn't have any um I didn't have any like um champagne darling. So my housemate actually had a couple of cans of this in the fridge. I was like, hey, can I I'm going on a, a, a podcast, I need something to 
<laughs> make me giddy. So here we are, darling. We're making the most of what we have. Well, you don't have to be giddy, but you have to have some kind of uh, lubrication. You have you can't come dry. <laughs> uh, well, you Bye. know, I've <laughs> I haven't spoken to you for a little while. In fact, actually, we had a little um, action in one of our groups that we're in on Insta in, uh, DMs, didn't we? Yesterday, just to catch up, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this group. It's getting some action, but I have to go to bed. I'm working at eight thirty in the morning, and. That's exactly it. I haven't been as active on social media. I haven't been as active in group chats and things. I'm, I don't want to say struggling to keep up the content, but I had some pre-recorded content bagged, like MC30. Mariah didn't continue with MC30, but I had content I had filmed for my YouTube channel, and I'm so grateful that I have that to lean on because I'm not actively recording for my YouTube channel right now um, because I've still got lot, I've still got things that need to go out anyway. But I'm grateful for that because as I'm going back to work and getting busier, I'm just focusing more on like recording the podcast and stuff because I want to keep that up. I don't want to ever miss a week, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of back to work. Well, I am back to work, but it's like, it's, it's different. It's different. I'm not working with lots of different clients. I'm working with one main client, but more hours, um, for another client. I'm working from home. That's what I was doing this morning. And in fact, I was, it was a little bit of a drag. If I'm honest, work today, it was fine, but it was a little bit of a drag. And then back in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm recording a podcast. And I, I always enjoy recording podcasts, but it's, but it's switched on. It's energetic. It's like sociable. And the back of my mind and with this wet weather, I was like, oh, I could so just do a sofa day I could just get into PJs and do a sofa day but like as I kind of as my brain had that thought like it in the instant follow-up thought was oh it's Taz and I was like oh it's Taz it's Taz oh that's like it's that's that's so like easy it's fun you know like I was just like oh no I'm looking forward to it I always look forward to every episode I record but um yeah for like half a second I forgot who I was chatting with today and then you, you that thought carried me through work because it was a little bit bleak this morning so you are joining me for my first glitter themed podcast because I think we need to have a few because for me the 20th anniversary is a very significant moment because I remember it, you remember it, you're older than me so you damn well better remember it um, <laughs> and we've lived through every era since glitter but we experienced glitter and it's kind of, it feels like it's kind of come full circle, it's almost come full circle, because we've had things like hashtag justice for glitter, we had the firecracker version of Loverboy, we've even had some glitter merchandise, and I'm still wanting more, but I'm like, well, how much more do I need, you know, in order to feel fully satisfied, that it has been some bits and pieces, but I just kind of want to just sit in this moment of the 20th anniversary, and just relive the music and more and just enjoy it. Um, but let's let's kind of touch on that. First of all, uh, you just told me off camera before we started, you still don't have your Loverboy t-shirt? Yeah, I ordered it and it's, um, I have two items coming from the Mariah store. One is dating back to June, and um, first of June, and one is dating back to early July. It's just showing up like that. They're in Ireland for the last couple of weeks, four packages, but they ain't moving. But I contacted Live Nation. They said they could take... Um, two to ten weeks from the date of posting so that's a lot i was like okay that's fair like whoa so that's i think i'm really on like week wide 10 bracket now. two to ten i weeks. think i'm at, no, or maybe two to twelve weeks actually so i'm on week 10 now so i'm hoping the next two weeks well come week 13 i hope you start making some noise because yeah i mean it's pride merchandise mine came um well i missed june i think it was early july or maybe it was the last day of june i don't know Thinking about, I should have, I should have worn the Loverboy tee today. I didn't think about that. Um, I was like, "Hello, we're talking about glitter," and I actually have a piece of merch I could have worn, but I, I forgot about that, so not wearing that. Um, but oh, I hope yours turns up soon. So it, it's the Loverboy t-shirt, and what else did you order? Remind me. I like, I got some pride socks for. I have the shade fan. I have other bits. Um, I can't really remember now, but there's, I know there's two packages coming anyway. So. Oh. I sometimes forget what I even order. But you remember <laughs> last year, actually, on a side note, that there was like, um, her shop was updated with some glitter items. And then it was taken down after a couple of days. And I think anyone that made an order, they got an email saying it couldn't be fulfilled. So I'm wondering, were they a year early? I wonder if there's something coming in the next couple of days to mark the 20th anniversary. Because obviously that stock is designed and it's there. Well, it was, you're talking about the, the justice for glitter stuff, right? There was a mug and it, something else. A few, but, it was, but it was all justice for glitter, wasn't it? I can't really 100% know. I, I just remember 
DM and a few lambs going, oh, here, in case you didn't know that the shop has been updated. But I know orders went through, but then they had to be contacted to say, we can't fulfill this order. Yeah, it was so strange. It was so strange. For me, I think it was because we had Justice for Glitter in 2018, and then it got like a new lease of life because when she did the caution promo late 2018, she's been asked about it in interviews. And then the whole you know, Mariah saved 2020, that kind of kicked off early in 2020, because that's when she announced Glitter is now available everywhere, and we could stream it and play it, and we had access to it, and I think it was around that time that it, you know, it was like, okay, Glitter's got some momentum, and I felt like it was, like, to me, it felt like, um, like a bit of a rush job, because it was just like justice for Glitter, there was nothing really super interesting, I didn't order anything, certainly nothing compare, you know, that compares to what we got with um, like Pride merch. Like it wasn't anything like amazing with like photos and stuff. So I felt like it was like, oh, that's a bit like, yeah, just slapping glitter on a mug, slapping glitter on like whatever else. I wasn't ordering any of it. And I think maybe they did that and thought, you know what, next year's the 20th anniversary, let's just can it. Let's just wait, let's just hold it back. So I don't know, but here we are. And at the time of us recording this, nothing has been announced. So I don't know. I really hope that, that we do get something because the Pride merch was fun. And we had Billy. We had, you know, Mariah as Billy. Um, we had the lover. I mean, that that lover boy tea. I'm still not over it. I hope you love it when it arrives. And it's oversized, so it's difficult to guess, you know, which size to get and everything. But that was just freaking iconic. But I don't know. The minute it comes, you're like, okay, what's next? What's next? I'm like, I've got more coins to give. You know, take some more. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to see come forward for, like, you know, glitter merchandise? I mean, I wouldn't mind like a re-release of the actual soundtrack um, on, on a special, maybe limited edition vinyl or something like that. I mean, I have the original vinyl, but it's always nice to have a special edition or whatever. So mm. updated, um, maybe with the new lover buy on there as well. Um, oh, absolutely. I don't know what to... <clears throat> and I think she should, because apparently now she owns the, the rights or track masters or whatever it is of that album, because Virgin Media is gone now. So obviously she had to buy the masters and own her own master. So... Why she's not really putting that out there and making a good coin for herself, I don't know. So we'll see. Maybe there's stuff being worked out as we speak. I would love to think so. Um, from what I hear, when we got all the MC30 vinyl re-releases, that was put into motion at least like 18 months in advance. Like it was, it was happening. So, but things like, even like the rarities just didn't sell so well. And friend to the pod, Omer, who was on a previous episode, um, who I met at, you know, backstage at um, the Wembley Charm Bracelet concert years ago, and we reconnected uh, last year online and found each other. Omer said that, it, it, I mean, he's got some good sources, and it, and it really doesn't sound like we're getting Glitter re-released on vinyl, at least. And and I, you know, I believe him. But right now, it's like, well, we're, it's it's almost like too late. <laughs> you know, it would, have, it would have happened by now. So now I've had to let go of a lot of wishes, including a vinyl, re-release because not everyone has that to their name Taz you have a vinyl glitter so yay for you but some of us sat here around the world we need a glitter vinyl in our lives so I've had to make my peace with that that's not going to happen uh, nor do I want to fork out like 400 whatever on um, <laughs> an original pressing so I'm living without one but I'm just now I'm thinking maybe just maybe just social media maybe just a few little things I don't know we'll see we'll see so today we're going to focus on the music because there's so much within Glitter and I thought like, we can't do everything at once. So maybe I'll do, I haven't really finished fleshing out all these ideas. I'm like, let's just start with the music and see where we go. So we're going to talk about the music, but just before we really get in, you know, do almost like a track by track, let's just put ourselves in that setting. So uh, you and I, are, you know, we're safe and comfortable with each other. So we, we put numbers to it before. 2001. I was 17 and I'm now a lamb. It's my first album I'm anticipating. Like Rainbow had happened. I was madly in love with um, number ones. That pushed me in the direction of all these different albums. I had explored her discography. Rainbow I loved, but I kind of wasn't aware of when it was coming out and nor did I go to the London Rainbow concert. Glitter was the first album where I was online looking up websites, hearing about you know, rumoured songs and blah, blah, blah. So for me, I remember it so, so vividly. 
It was my rough initiation into the lamely, as I always say, because it was rough being a lamb out on the streets in 2001. So there's me uh, at college trying to talk up Mariah to my college friends and, um, you know, just being like the gayest, not that the gayest 17 year old, because I was like very shy, very quiet, but I was closeted. I wasn't even like, um, like sat comfortably with my own identity, you know? So I wasn't like, oh, it's a secret. I was still wasn't even really like fully, fully like, am I, am I not? I just know I freaking love Mariah. And I'm just, I'm so looking forward to her album called Glitter coming out. Like, of course I was gay. Of course I was gay. Come on. But um, I was just so looking forward to the album and everyone was giving me like serious side eye, like, what the fuck and especially when lover boy came out and happened and glitter was a whole mess it felt so isolating which is why when i did meet lambs for the first time in london and had my first circle of uh, you know lamb friends it meant so much to me because i didn't feel like a freaking freak show because no one around me in my day-to-day -day life saw mariah as anyone credible at that point is this resonating with you at all or was your experience different talk to me about taz in 2001 and where you were in your life as, as glitter was coming out like i in the in ireland like there was nobody really in my area so i didn't have any mariah fans or any meetups so it would be kind of whatever i could gather online um i remember in like back then like internet was in its infancy i think i even had to go to the local library to even like rent a computer or something for like an hour and I actually were remember you, listening were you to putting like down. coins in, coins in like a little thing. I think because I was a member, you could just book a slot. You didn't have to, you didn't have to pay, but you could have a slot. <laughs> and they kick you out if there's nobody, if there was four or five computers, if nobody else was that one, they'd still be like your hours up. You're like, whatever. But, uh, <laughs> one to tell the but anyway, I, I do remember, I do remember listening to Loverboy for the very first time in that library. And I was like, okay, this is not your typical Mariah first song release. Like at that point, we had. You know, for Honey, with Rainbow, all our albums, all our first singles, Fancy. And remember, like, I'm early 90s fan, so the first single always kind of pound. But I remember sitting there going, like, what in the fresh hell is this? It just was a lot. It was the cameo. It was the woo and all this. I was like, okay, I just can't process. After the first listen, I was like, is that really her first song? I just don't know. I don't know how I felt about it. At the time. Obviously, I've grown to love it. But first, you know where some songs you just, just like, oh, bitch, this is a hit. This was not, for me, initially, you know hit me where it usually would but i do remember like um massive promo around that album like in this in the stores there was like all these little um promotional items at the thing hanging from the ceiling like the virgin did put a lot of money yeah into... like what do you call them like mobiles like little <laughs> like little things yeah like you we call it a mobile here in england in uk like um something you'd hang over like a baby's crib and it's got like a string and exactly. something string something so, but yeah, um, yeah, record stores, I think you can find them on eBay and stuff. They were like glitter mobiles that would be hanging in, in record stores. And then there was like little cardboard boxes with glitter on the top and like little pictures from glitter. I remember collecting some items or like in this, if I go up to the counter like, um, can I have that please? And they're like, oh, not really, but I'm about to travel like four hours. <laughs> I would blag it, don't worry. I wouldn't leave in the store without those items. I'd always be like, I remember when I was 21, it was like, I ain't leaving here without getting those. Like, you need to find some back store or give me those. <laughs> but at that point, now it could have been out for two or three months. Like, it wouldn't be like a fresh release, you know, at that point. Anyway, where was it going? Yeah, I just remember like a massive amount of promotion for us. Um, I remember Mariah being really excited about the project when, when she was referred to it as All That Glitters. Um, and we were like, she was building, I think she was really hopeful for the whole thing, the, the movie and the soundtrack. And um, also, you probably noticed already, but Heartbreaker was actually meant for the Glitter soundtrack. That's right. She was trying yes, to rush yeah. Rainbow out to get out of Sony. Let's remind so the So she children. actually pulled that song. Yeah. Mm. yeah so, so Heartbreaker was part of that Glitter idea, but she pulled it forward then as the first single from Rainbow. And obviously, that was a huge hit. So I don't know how that would have fitted into the movie, but that was supposed to be the, the hit song from Har from Glitter. Yeah. Yeah, Glitter, nice. you're right. Glitter was meant to be kicked off by Heartbreaker because Mariah was working on All That Glitters from Butterfly. And then Sony were like, oh, we want you to put out a compilation for the holiday season, 98. So she pushed it back and she, um, you know, just, just pushed it back. And then she pushed it back again to do Rainbow. Because right now, at that point, she's made the, making the decision that she wants to get the heck out of her contract 
I think maybe Tommy wants her out as well. So that's, my, you know, from the memoir we know, she went to Japan and spoke to the head of Sony, not Sony Music, but the head of Sony, um, made the deal that she made. I think she then wanted to, because I think you're right, she had high hopes for, for Glitter, the movie and the soundtrack. So she wanted to take it somewhere else, but she was working on Glitter, or as it was known, all the Glitters, pretty much straight after Rainbow. Um, so yeah, Heartbreaker, I, I remember, I can't remember like specific interviews, anyone that can please help us out and let us know, but I do remember her saying in a couple of interviews that Heartbreaker was intended for, for Glitter, but then she ended up using it for Rainbow instead, like it's just crazy, can you imagine if Glitter had Heartbreaker instead of Loverboy, it's just, that blows my mind. <laughs> yeah, well... Yeah, that, like I, I don't know how it would fit into the movie now, but look, it probably would have made sense. Obviously, they would have worked out a heartbreaker line probably when, he, when they split up or whatever, it would have kicked in. But anyway, it was made for a different project. So, yeah. But um, for Glitter, I mean, initially when I first heard, when she first released the first sample, I was like, oh, I'm not here for this. I, I wasn't loving it, to be honest. But then I didn't know the story about the drama behind the Loverboy song. So... Exactly. There's, there's plenty to get stuck into. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a very quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to go through track by track. We're going to talk about the soundtrack or album. That's the whole thing as well. Is it a soundtrack? Is it an album? So we'll be back after this quick break and we're going to get stuck into the glitter tracks. Thanks for listening to Hey Lamb, guys. I hope you are enjoying it. If you are, you can leave me a little tip. You can buy me a drink over on buymeacoffee.com. It is a great way to show your support to your favorite creators by buying them a drink. Simply head over to buymeacoffee.com slash hey lamb and you can tip me with a little drink. Cheers. Sidebar. Do you Botox? Nope. <laughs> There's the evidence. Well, until you just uh, <laughs> gave me that little eyebrow flex. Yeah, looking looking, looking smooth. Uh, lighting is uh, doing well. Well, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't pull your forehead out. I'm flirting. Not with you, with the idea. I'm flirting with the idea. Um, because I've got but movement. Yours looks really smooth. No, no, no. I've got movement. I've got movement. I, I don't need that. That's got no business on my face. So anyway, we're back. Um, <laughs> a little sidebar there. But um, also, I was going to say, Taz, you know, and in, in the intro, I didn't say, I always get um, lots of like, yay, yay, it's Taz. Every time you're on the, the podcast and people, they love your face, they love your accent. And I remember that like, sometimes you're like, oh, I'm really worried I'm speaking too fast. And I'm like, well, I talk fast anyway. And they just have to deal with it. I tried to slow down a little bit, but no, people are here for it. People are absolutely for it. And, and Malachi was a recent guest and he was worried about his Welsh, his, his Welsh accent. I'm like, no, just speak, just, just be you because Taz used to be like that. It's like, just fuck it. Just like be yourself. And you're honestly one of the most, um, like well-received guests and the numbers are, it's reflected in the numbers. So yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the lambs, the lambs know you, the lambs love you. <laughs> And I love the lambs. I mean, I'd love actually a little gathering of some sort. I mean, imagine that we could like do like something or even in the UK or something and like bring European lambs over and do like a little thing. I don't know. It would be just yeah. cool. No, totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. When Mariah announces, um, you know, a, a tour, a residency, whatever it is, I'm down and I want to do something I, I need to connect with you know um more lambs in person and stuff and um here's another sidebar before we actually get stuck into the track list in i've been speaking to uh nath another uh, deep friend of the pod and uh, the youtube channel and nath and i are trying to get our dates lined up so nath can pay me another visit because he came to spend a weekend a year ago and we're like oh my gosh it's a year ago and we filmed some lamb versus lamb together and uh, it was a really fun um, weekend to like to just to geek out with Mariah and stuff. So we're trying to sort that out. And Taz, I'm looking in your direction. We need to get our shit together. It's been like 20 years we've been friends and not met. And we are a short hip Scott, uh, hop, skip and jump away. It's just a little little bit of water to get over. 
So we need to make some plans. It needs to happen. Now things are kind of, kind of almost back to normal. I'm getting that kind of travel itch. You know, I want to start like going places and seeing people. So uh, I think I, I'm, I'm, I'm threatening to, I'm going to be coming your way shortly. <laughs> make it happen, girl. Make it happen. I'm down for that. Even if Nate comes, we can like work something out, obviously. We need to get, yeah. I think the thing is, it's difficult for us to even get our shit together to get some like Zoom splashes going these days because everyone's getting busy and stuff. So they're actually getting like a weekend. But no, I'm, I'm seriously down for that. And we can record. Um, of course, I just want to enjoy the pleasure of you guys' company, but I want to get a video. I want to get a podcast. We can record something like live together or whatever. It would be fun and festive. But back to the topic in hand. Glitter. Let's do a track by track. Let's do Lover Boy, which starts and closes the album because we have Lover Boy remix to launch the album and then the regular version to close the album. What what were your thoughts about both versions and how do you feel about the remix opening and then the regular version closing? What what do you think about that? Like I know she's done that on albums before, like say for Heartbreaker and Heartbreak Remix on one, but on that one they were so similar. It felt like a cop out almost. It was like a, like an extra track. But yeah, yeah. It I wasn't feel like, like it was needed. It was it was it was weird, wasn't it? It's like because because they're, they're so similar. Heartbreaker launching Rainbow and then track what seven or whatever Heartbreaker Remix, but it's a totally different vibe. It's just completely different. And thank God I found you. Although we don't have the remix as part of the the album track listing, it could have been, because it's like a different song. Lover Boy and Lover Boy Remix, it's the same song, it's the same song. So it felt weird, especially coming out of Twister into Lover Boy. That's like a whole mood shift. So, sorry to interrupt, but Lover Boy, give me your thoughts and your feelings, which do you prefer, the regular version, the remix? I, like, of those two versions, I would prefer the remix. I like Bratz at the verse on there, so. I think yep. for me, I'd like that. And the little kind of, the little nudge at the girl we don't know, you know, hate on me as much as you want to, you can never do what the fuck I do or whatever, it's you know? Classic. <laughs> so we all know what that's referring to. Ah. Kudos to Brass for bringing the lyrics. But, um, you know, Lover Boy to me, actually, I was just thinking about this before we came on. It's kind of in the vein of Honey, because, I mean, you can take that, you can interpret this song Mm -hmm. ways, and I think it was coming in the vein, vein excuse the pun uh, <laughs> but like <laughs> the feeling inside and all this you know? oh my god oh my god the feeling inside um uh oh my gosh hang on I'm gonna blank on the lyrics when he invites me over it's quite a bit of heaven oh it's quite a bit of heaven to feel him inside time. when he invites me over I come every time every time I mean like seriously <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but seriously, well, like, she she laid some foundations with honey, and now she's building on them. And actually, I do remember at the time there were some uh, like reviews and articles that were commenting that she's a bit more. I can't remember the term. It's like they weren't saying promiscuous, but a bit more like sexually confident or something. Like she's a little bit because the lead single was Lover Boy, and she's saying exactly that. She comes every time. She loves feeling him inside. And I'm like, sing it, tell it, love it. <laughs> Obviously, on first listen, I, it wasn't a dislike that it was just so left field to me. It just didn't sound like another Mariah Carey song. It was, yeah. but then again, it obviously was going back to the 80s and it was going back, you know, it was a concept. So we get that. But it's so busy, isn't it? It's a really busy I, track. And I remember really, being in the car with my family and it, it came on the radio. And I was like, yay, can you turn it up, please? And my dad, my father said something like, well, it wouldn't be so bad if you could find the beat or find the melody. Because there isn't, you know, it, it's because it, it so heavily uses the candy sample by Cameo, but it doesn't even, like, use it. It builds the song around that candy. And I love, candy is such a strong track. You have to use it. You can't have it in the background. You have to use it as heavily as she did. But when she's doing all her background vocals and then the melody and it, 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 there's a lot, there's a lot going on. And once you know the song, you know it. But I remember it took me several listens to kind of get into bed with it and get comfortable. You know, it's very busy. The downside is, I guess, I don't know if the powers that be had any influence back then and they probably did. But 
like the fans were buying the single. Yes, it was reduced in price. Yes, so was every other artist. So at the end of the day, back then, pre-streaming, the break it down for the kids, you still had to get up after ass and go to the store and buy Loverboy as a single if you liked it. Um, so therefore, I can't. I can't outsold. wait. I can't wait. I can't wait for Calvin to have kids and you and you <laughs> tell these stories again. <laughs> but like buying the single, it was outselling, and by far, like I think she ended up getting a number two against Destiny Child that week. Yeah, it was and bootylicious. In terms I mean, of sales, of all the songs to terms, you know lose out to, bootylicious. I mean, oh my god, what a song, right? You know, so. Obviously, I wanted the the number one, but Bootylicious was absolutely huge. It was so big. But well, Loverboy was the biggest selling single in America of two thousand one. It sold. I think the week. I think the week for it went to number two, and Bootylicious was number one, right? I think it was selling three to one in Mariah's favor for every one copy of Bootylicious, wow. three singles. But what was happening is Airplay had come into the mix recently, just before that, so Airplay counted. And DJs were not playing the song, and this was going to affect the charts. So no matter how much she sold, a portion of what was weighted going to number one was your airplay. And whether it just was on a radio friendly song or whatever, it just didn't get the counts that it needed. Now yeah. we know twenty years later, like Spotify and things count, but airplay was the Spotify back then. That was a huge factor in a song playing. As I said, I don't know if there was power to be ringing the phone, going, "You better not play this new song by Mariah." I don't want her getting number one because they're obviously trying to file. Oh, yeah, undoubtedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, those phone calls were placed. Threats were made. I'm sure of it. Um, I don't know if you're picking it up, but I'm now sat in like a full-on rainstorm. I don't, I don't know if you can hear. I live on um, this deck house with a flat roof. So for me, it's very, very loud. Apologies <laughs> for the background noise. I thought I was going to be safe, but the weather is like up against my window right now. So we love Loverboy. We prefer the remix. That's cool. That's fine. Let's move on. Track two, Lead the Way. Like, oh my God. For the longest time, Lead the Way was one of my top five, top three Mariah songs. And because I'm such a sucker for a ballad, and I've kind of, you know, expanded my taste a little bit. Like, it doesn't have to be a big, big ballad to win me over. But Lead the Way is so beautiful. What a vocal performance. It's probably my favorite song off the album, but in a way that feels, I feel a bit weird saying that because I feel like I should choose something that's more representative of the album because it doesn't, it doesn't feel 80s at all. It doesn't feel like it's glitter in a way, but we'll get to that because um, of the background of the song or when it was written and recorded and stuff. But I love Lead The Way. It could be my favorite on the album. How do you feel about it? Like vocally, I mean, if you want to showcase Mariah's vocals, it's a go to song. You know, this is just like when she's going off at the end, like it's unparalleled. Nobody else, that's Mariah's stamp on that song. Um, it's a beautiful song, opens again, very contrasting to the Love by Remix. It goes from like like yeah. this all over the place kind of tune to a real subdued start to this song, like the piano and real love song type thing. But um, yeah, again, a, like an amazing song up there with my one of my faves. I don't think it gets the love that it deserves, actually, when I stop and think about that. I think a lot of people overlook it, but Lead the Way really is um, one of Mariah's like, standout performance tracks. Oh, it's so good. And you said it. If you want to like just show someone a vocal performance, just play them Lead the Way. Do you remember Mariah said at the time that she wanted to separate the album and have all the bops on one CD and then have the ballads on another? And when you, um, you're, you have the glitter vinyl, right? So it's got pretty much that. It's like, you know, side A, side B, and it's a different track listing. Because I forget that because I don't own the vinyl. Um, but yeah, it's that's that's the case, right? It's like bops, but one side ballads the other. That only that only came to my um, attention very recently, in the last two or three weeks, one of my friends sent that through. And I, I must have looked at the back of it, but it's just not something that... I could just see the tracks that I was familiar with, but it never occurred to me that it was the up tempos on one side and the beat and the other side had the um the more subdued track so I, I think it's a good concept i like it yeah yeah she said that i remember her interview she was saying she was trying to work it out like that so they could do like a cd1 cd2 but that makes it more expensive to produce or whatever but she wanted to have it like a two-part collection so in the end but she because she kept speaking about they had to have these like transitions 
which is why you've got, you know, it's not a date and like extra little things and instrumentation because it is, I mean, the, the shifts in gear are so drastic. Loverboy remix into Lead the Way is nuts. And Twister going back into Loverboy is a bit crazy. But there are other moments that work pretty well. And I remember her at the time saying that sequencing, like the order the tracks are put in is such an important part. And she's not just happy with having a good collection of songs. There has to be a flow. They have to transition in and out. And she had to work really hard with Glitter because these songs, it's such a mixed bag. And I, I do specifically remember her talking about um, sequencing with the Glitter album because she wanted to have a CD1, CD2, the bops and the ballads. Because that's kind of how I access this album now. I don't, I mean, in preparation for us talking about it today, of course, I listened to it top to bottom a couple of times. But prior to today, I like to go in and, you know, reach the songs that I like because, like, it's not an album for me that's a mood. Like, oh, I'm in the mood for Glitter because there are, like, beautiful ballads and then there's bops. You know, and I'm more like likely to lean in, take a couple of songs and put them to a playlist. Do you listen to it like top, top to bottom or shuffle or? I actually listen to it top to bottom. So I listen in the flow that we came. But um, I suppose the album is quite short. It only has 11 tracks if you don't count the remix of. Um, so she would never probably relate. If you made it into two discs, it would look like two singles almost because it would have been like five or six tracks in each yeah. disc. So I guess it yeah. made sense to make. Um, I'm also surprised that the Glitter didn't even have another extended um, soundtrack with the songs from the movie in there, like with the blind. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. I yeah, it could have been. It could have been the soundtrack um, where you've got not just her recordings. There could have been some like instrumentation moments or extended versions. There could have been the other, you know, some other songs that were featured that were not part of the actual thing. And actually, the, here's, here, that's the thing that I wanted to talk about. You know, I lined that up before the break and then. You had an extended break and I forgot, apologies. But do you count it as an album or a soundtrack? A soundtrack? Because at the time she was my new album, my new album is a soundtrack and an album, it's still a Mariah album. It was album, album, album. And then when it didn't do well, it was, oh, well that was a soundtrack, you know? And she distanced herself from it. And I get that, that's fine. But, you know, I remember the hype stick, it was like 11, was it 11, 12, new recordings by Mariah Carey, it was a soundtrack and an album, that's how it was pitched. Afterwards, she was like, oh no, that was a soundtrack. Yeah. How do you classify it? I actually was going to come up with that point as well, when it was, before it tanked, it was an album, and then it became, so that's just a soundtrack. I guess it's not your typical Mariah Carey album, because she had to put herself in an 80s headspace. So it wasn't something that she, she had to put herself somewhere else in her mind to be able to come up with these tracks and, you know, get the beats and look for samples. So I guess it's not, an album and I'm not just saying that because of Tank I mean it still sold 4 million copies which a lot of albums can't even do today it's not it was Tank by Mariah's standards if you want to say that but a lot of artists never reached 4 million when it released so that was still an amazing feat and I think that's why she looks back now and after you, now after Justice for Glitter she can own it again though I remember her saying like Dust in an interview she wouldn't even say they were Glitter she was just so far removed of anything she just did, I'd say there was an actual thing in her you know, when you're talking about interviews, you probably don't bring up the whole glitter thing. You know, yeah. it was oh, just yeah. something she just wanted to avoid. So it's hard to say that it's a Mariah Carey album because it wasn't a natural. She had to put herself, I guess, in Philly's headspace as opposed to being a Mariah Carey album. It's still a Mariah Carey album. It's a weird one to explain. It's a Mariah yeah. Carey album from Philly's perspective. I it straddles both. Could. Yeah, it does straddle both. And I, I, I compare now, you know, like Lady Gaga's, you know, A Star Is Born. I'm like, well... It really is just a collection of Lady Gaga songs. But technically, it's from the character's perspective, but some of them aren't. And it's not just her. That's the thing. If there were other people singing, because you know, on A Star Is Born, you've got Lady Gaga, but you've got Bradley Cooper. But Glitter, it's just Mariah. It's pitched as, it's just Mariah on the cover. It's, you know, 11 new Mariah Carey recordings. It's a soundtrack and an album. I do count it as an album because she's on every single track. And if she, yeah, she covered it, she sang it, she wrote it and sang it. Like, it's just her, any way you look at it. The only song that I really look at as being, like, okay, like, Never Too Far, she wrote for the movie. But it could just be a Mariah song, you know? 
Reflections is the only song where I'm like, okay, that is from the perspective of a character. She put herself in her character's shoes for the, you know, for that one song. I don't know. I don't know. So guys, if you're watching on YouTube, let me know in the comments below. Do you count this as an album or a soundtrack or both? Um, and if you're listening, head head over to Hate Lamp Podcast on Instagram and let us know because I go back and forth on this. But when I did my album rating uh, series on my YouTube channel, of course I included it. I'm not going to do everything but Glitter. I do count it as a Mariah Carey album, but it's also a soundtrack at the same time because it, it was a themed it's like a, it's a themed album it's an 80s themed album and I think part of the problem people had was it wasn't 80s themed enough because some of the songs just sound like Mariah Carey songs they don't it does, it's not like oh yeah it's so 80s through and through it was 80s inspired 80s flavored but it wasn't smacking you across the face as being so 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 80s I don't know we digress we digress let's move on to track number three, if we thoughts feelings. Okay, so while I be, before I get into that track, I just want just while you're on the eighties thing, I think people weren't ready for the eighties in two thousand and one. Oh god, so no. it was just too close. It was too early. So I think <clears throat> it was too early. So she was ahead of her time getting all these samples and things, <clears throat> and that's where she missed the mark then as well because people were not ready to go back to the eighties. People now today, even in modern pop culture, like Dua Lipa and all these ones, have all these like beats coming in that are very reminiscent probably of 80s style and people are here for it because now it's 40 years ago where I think it was just too soon back then but now we go back in and we're going to dive into if we so I think the problem that would have been a big hit for Mariah and she'd have had no problem releasing this and they probably would have got all the works to have a video and be out there as a cool pop along song I think definitely MTV TRL everyone would have been all over this but J-Lo had taken the Lover Boy sample and then on her remix of her song, she incorporated Ja Rule. And it all sounded very, very similar to If We. It was the same vibes and kind of bounce his kind of gravelly voice coming over. So she obviously then was not going to be in a position for everyone to go, well, this is like a rip off of I Don't Know Her. So yeah, she couldn't release she that. Clear of anything she, to couldn't, do with that. she couldn't do anything. So that, if I, I, We, it was I like. I do like If We, but it was foiled. Yeah, I think, um, well, it's, it's on record now, is it Irv Gotti, whatever, like, you know, say, oh yeah, Tommy said, I want you to do it like a, it's back and forth with Ja Rule, with this other entertainer, and he knew exactly what was being ask, asked of him, but hey, you're being asked and paid, so you do it, right? But I felt like, yeah, that was like the second foiling. We, you know, we spoke about um, the the firecracker sample with Loverboy and maybe we'll talk about that more later. But um, yeah, If We is one people forget. That was a great big foiling moment as well for Mariah because once that song was down, she included it. And I do like If We, but she couldn't do anything with it. She couldn't do anything with it because what's her face had done her own thing with, you know, using exactly the same format. Do you remember it was um, reworked into a slightly different version? What would you do? Yes. What would you do? Yeah, I remember. Which that. I think was a few years later. <laughs> she, I think it was someone. 2004, maybe. And it was, yeah, it was like, um, who was on that track? Who was on that track? Was it Shade Cheese or someone like that? Nate Dog. I'm not sure, but it was very, very, very similar. It just felt <laughs> like like a remix of If We. It just felt very, very. It was similar. the very same. Yeah, yeah. But I do like If We. I do like If We, and I think it's. Something that at the time possibly could have been a single, but as we said, she couldn't do. She couldn't do anything with it. It's just sad. Right. Okay. You know what, Taz? Um, still recording. Still recording. But I'm just saying, like live decision making as we're recording. This is going to take longer than I thought, which is fab. It's fine. But I'm not going to rush us through these next few songs. So. What I'm proposing is my first ever part one, part two, <laughs> because we're going to go through this track listing and talk about the music and talk about the songs, but we're not going to fit it into a one hour show. I don't want to like then do like an hour 10, hour 15 and maybe try and like rush it, rush it through. So we, we, we're we going to go for like another song or two and then we'll have to wrap up this episode. We'll have a little splash break. And then we'll just carry on and that'll be part two and the kids will get two episodes in one week. I think I won't even spread it across two Perfect. weeks. I'll just put two episodes out <laughs> in the same week. So we'll give them part one on a, a Friday and then we'll put 
part two out midweek. Otherwise, we're going to try and cram too much in and we're not going to do it justice. And we all know glitter needs justice more than anything. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I was looking at the time. I'm okay. looking at the songs left. I'm looking at our show notes. I'm thinking, oh my God, we're like... 45 50 minutes in there's no time left so okay let's let's do another song or two maybe so we get halfway through um and then we'll we'll wrap up so uh track four didn't mean to turn you on a cover song from the 80s originally written by jimmy jam and terry lewis right um which i forget so that's um surprising to uh for me to you know remind myself of so big big friends of Mariah, she worked with them on Glitter and Charm Bracelet, and did she work with them Rainbow as well? So she's you know friendly with them. I'm so happy she covered it. I don't think she really did anything drastic to it. It didn't need anything, but just her vocals on it for me. If I think of Glitter and what gives me the '80s party vibes, it is didn't mean to turn you on. That's the one for me where maybe if there were more songs like that then critics and people would have credited it as being a fully, fully 80s kind of vibe. I don't know if that makes sense. What do you what do you feel about Didn't Mean to Turn You On? So, I, again, like that, you mentioned a while ago, sexually kind of going down that route. It was a very not, not typical thing. Mariah, Mariah would be always kind of undertone sexually. She wouldn't be out there. Like, being a fan, you'd know, like, even from some of the Butterfly songs, there'd be kind of inclinations of maybe between the sheets or she wouldn't be kind of, but look, I didn't mean to turn you on. I was like, whoa, okay. That for me at the time was like shocking that she would sing those lyrics, you know? Because, you know, she was always Mary Poppins and things like that, you know? So for me, I like that she was going down that route, but um, I do love it. I you say quintessential 80s. I think Robert Palmer, did he cover it at one point? I'm not sure. Anyway, I do love it. And I think it's a lovely addition to the album. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad it got um like the I said like the shine that it did, but it got it got its moment. Like it's not just like a random song that's on the soundtrack you don't remember from the movie. You know, like I it, it was I think it was used well. I think it was used well. I think it was a smart choice. I was always interested with that song. Did she I can't remember in any interviews, did she like know straight away? Like, oh, if I'm doing all the glitters and it's based in the eighties that's a song that I want to use. Or did someone kind of present it to her or suggest it? I wonder, because she's not covering lots of songs. I thought there maybe would be more covers, but there's there's not really. So they're very, very well considered and deliberately chosen. And I really am trying to remember if I can remember anything about her choice to cover Didn't Mean to Turn You On, and I don't. So again, kids listening, watching, if you remember anything about how didn't mean to turn you on came up as a song that she would cover let me know because i think it's a perfect choice for the album and i think it does really really well on the album and it shows a different side lyrically as you say because she's you know singing someone else's lyrics so she gets to live in that fantasy of you know someone else's vibe but it's just fun it's just good freaking fun i think it totally totally um belongs on the album taz you know what we're gonna pause there we're gonna pause there and wrap up this episode because we've still got so many more songs. We're going to talk about Don't Stop, All My Life, Reflections, Last Night I Did Save My Life, Want You Never Too Far, Twister, Lover Boy Again. There's so much more to talk about. We've got Justice for Glitter, The Lasting Impact and The Legacy. And, and we're going to play Spin, Pin or Bin, but we're not going to do it today. This is going to be my first ever episode with no Spin, Pin or Bin. We're going to do that. We're going to save that part two so we're going to continue going through all of the album soundtrack songs and then when we get to the end we are going to play spin pin or bin the glitter edition so those of you listening and watching please do check back for part two it'll be coming out just a few days after this part one and i'll be rejoined by taz and we will play spin pin or bin glitter edition in the meantime please do go and follow the show over on instagram it's hayland podcast i'm also on instagram at triple tots and you can catch my good friend taz on instagram taz conway and twitter is taz irish lamb taz let's have a splash break and then let's get stuck into part two of this album <laughs> <laughs>